1.2 million pounds. That is the amount that has been returned to the Nigerian government's coffers. Um, it's been tagged the James Ibo reload. Uh, but the bigger question is not so much the amount as to where exactly is the money. The outer state government has come out to say that they don't have it in their account, as has been spread before now. Uh, the Accountant General of the Federation has also said, OK, well, I said earlier I was in their account. Well, it's not exactly in their account. There are proceedings that have to follow that money getting to Delta State. And, uh, of course, the UK confirmed that they did indeed send the money. So the big question on Hot Topics today is where is the £4.2 million um, pounds loot that was returned to Nigeria? Is it being re-looted? On the show today, we will be finding out. I have two journalists with me in the studio, Mr. Kunle Adeniyi, he's a regular on Hot Topics, and we also have Prince Timothy. Thank you for joining me, gentlemen. Always Thank pleasure. you. My name is Uju Umwachiku, and when I come back, we'll dig right into the search for the 4.2 million pounds. Don't go away. All right, so welcome back. It's still Hot Topics. We're going straight into the conversation of the day. I'm concerned about the whole dilly dallying about the money. Uh, we've got it, we've given it to Delta State. No, he's not supposed to go to Delta State. The agreement was that to be in the federal government coffers for a specific project. What exactly are your thoughts on this whole back and forth on the loot that has been returned? Kunle. Okay. Uh, well, that, that, that's, that's a million dollar question you just asked because you said we are going to find answers and I was wondering are we in the <laughs> best place to find answers to that because uh, let's 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 look at how it all started uh, you know that the attorney general of the federation has been leading that uh, task of trying to recover the so-called uh, Ibori loot uh, which has been in the UK and of course uh, I think up till about the past 24, 48 hours yes. before the accountant general made that statement, we had seen a bit of transparency on the part of the federal government. Uh, the moment where the conversations started, as to the UK government and the federal government have read that agreement that, oh yes, there were plans to return the money to yes. Nigeria. And I hope you also, let's also let you know that that 4.2 million pounds it's not the entire sum yes, a of what it. it is just a part mm -hmm. of it. And so it's like in good faith, we are going to give you a part of that money. We expect that this money will be used for certain projects. And we expect that we will, will during a period of time, be able to say, oh, this is what these monies were used for, talking about accountability of what these monies were used for before we can also go ahead to give you more of those funds that have been recovered. And so I think from the point where these discoveries were made to the point where these agreements were made, the federal government was transparent as to, oh, yes, this is what we are going to use this money for, mm -hmm. although there were conversations as to who does the money originally belong to. Does it belong to the federal government or should it be returned back to the Delta state government because that money was looted by from about an individual from the coffers of the Delta state government. Now, that is a different conversation entirely, although, I mean, as at the time where the federal government was being transparent mm -hmm. over this issue of the funds, and oh, we were expecting this fund from the UK government, some of us applauded it. Why? Because, look, we said we needed to be accountable for all of these funds. And it was even a good thing first that monies that were looted out of this country was finding their way yeah. back. But then the problem came. And of course, we got the confirmation from the Attorney General that yes, this money had come to the federal government. And of course, it was going to be expected that now that this money had come in, we were going to see, like in certain areas, even though some of us still had issues, when the federal government said, oh, this money will be used for the healthcare sector, this money will be used for the transport sector, for us, it still felt like a blanket statement. Mm -hmm. So what exactly this money is? We okay, wanted to go okay. into details mm -hmm. in what aspect of the healthcare sector you are going to infuse these funds into. In transportation sector, just like we had the Abacha loot, where we were told the Lagos, Kaduna, Ray Expressway, and the likes of them. We wanted specifics so that we could also monitor that yes, a certain amount of this looted funds will also go into this project and then we can trace and say, oh yes, did the federal government live up to its own side of the bargain? But we have not even gotten to that part. Right. And 
just as the money got and dropped into the <laughs> federal account. government's account, then the question as to, okay, what was the process and the likes and then the investigations at the National Assembly came and the bombshell was dropped. The accountant general, who should have the records of this form, talking about Ahmed Idris was asked the question about the... Uh, Shaking on his seat, feeling like someone under pressure, comes out to say that the money was returned to the Delta State Government, which in the first place was not the agreement That's with the federal government, the federal the government signed with the mm, UK. There, okay. in, in the agreement, there was no detail that there was no plan whatsoever that this money will be returned to the Delta State Government. Okay. The money will be given to the federal government mm -hmm. for projects that had been set aside. Now, okay. If that money was to have been returned to the Delta State Government, it could have been said in that agreement that, look, we are going to give you this money, even though the argu argument is this money originally belongs to Delta State Government. So it would have been expected that instead of the federal government delegating these funds for federal government projects, why don't you delegate these monies to be returned back to the states or the projects will be initiated in the states that where these monies will be deployed into right. and then the federal government would have been able to monitor. Okay. Let me take, uh, take the wind off you there and uh, ask uh, Prince. So ideally, who should the money, monies like this be returned to? Uh, in, in this specific uh, instance where it was taken, so to speak, from the Delta State government, should it go back to Delta State or should it uh, should the federal government decide or should the returner of the money <laughs> decide where it goes? Uh, in, and that is the UK in this case. Thank you so much. If you want to talk about fairness, yes. justice and truth, mm -hmm. it is typically back to the sender. Okay. And it will go back to the Delta State government. Okay. This is money that an ex governor took from the coffers of the state government. Federal government have no business with it. That money belongs to Delta State government. And that is what it should be going back to. When we got that of our ancestor, late General Sani Abasha, mm -hmm. it belongs to the federal government. Okay. Because he took it from the coffers of the federal government. Mm -hmm. That's how you define justice, equity, and fairness. But my worries is not where the money is going to, yeah. but where the monies are coming from. What kind of people are we in this country? I mean, somebody blatantly, openly, keep dipping his hands or her hands into the coffers of the commonwealth of blind, crippled, widows. You know, when you go to Delta from Wari to Asab and others, they collect levies even from these people that are on the roadside. You Is know, that selling the current fruits. happening all before now? Every day, every time. That's what they call the local government and state rate. Some of Kada people from KK people okay. are telling you how that money mm. accumulated. Mm, okay. And these are people under sun under rain. The deprived people of Nigerians. And somebody will just sign and convert it into billions of dollars and loot them away. I want to tell you something. Nigeria is thinking when it comes to greed and corruption. And no nation, no nation that glamorizes wealth, no matter how you make it, whether from 419, whether from the so-called rituals, whether from looting, embezzlement, wealthy people are celebrated without asking questions. We are in Abuja. Look at what the civil servants are doing. I'm shocked that nobody, the revolution, the next crisis in this country or whatever they call something similar like the NSAS protest will be against the civil servants. They are the ones holding this country down. We know they give contract to themselves. We know they give to their cronies. We know they give to their proxies. We know that civil servants are alleged to have estates, not mansions again. Somebody in grade level 12, all the children are schooling in Harvard. Is the person a magician? So these are the issue. And you are talking about the returnee. Look, when I look at the Western countries and all this, their uh, hypocrisy in talking about transparency and corrupt nations, 
I shake my head the one that says, practice what you preach. Mm. Look at Swiss. You know that these people are politically exposed persons who are holding offices in a country. And Britain now has the morality to tell us, even sign agreements, how we will use the money they kept for one of our leaders. Something is wrong. Mm. And I'm not impressed at all. But with UK, with Swiss, with even America, Canada, all these people are keeping the money. Had it been this government didn't even hire, remember they hired a lawyer mm. that is a forensic investigator mm. in, in indicating where looted funds are. are. Some of them, we wouldn't know about it. And they are using it, collecting levies, and they're using it to give loans to their people. Today, they hear that they give palliative of uh, an each individual, <laughs> 500 pounds, 500 uh, euro, 500 dollars. And it might be the money dropped there by one stupid, greedy, ungodly African leader. Or from the so-called undeveloped countries. They are helping us to be undeveloped. They are, we are, I'm not thanking them at all for returning this money. Because had it been was not found by that lawyer, mm. they wouldn't have on their own returned it. So all this, they are signing an agreement how we okay. will spend it. It's mere hypocrisy. But would you, would you necessarily blame the countries? Because for them, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's business, it's investment. You came to us to put your money in our banks, you know? No, they so are. So as individuals, not as, it's not like the person came in the name of the federal government of Nigeria. The individuals came as themselves to put that That's money why there. the word politically exposed persons are used in international banking. Mm. Politically exposed being that they are political leaders. You can't just be a president of a country and say your wife to deposit uh, $1 billion dollars. Of course, they will know that that money is from you. Okay. That the person is a crony or, or doing it in proxy. So we are blaming them because they know every month, the central bank of every nation look into how money comes in. That's why you talk about more money laundering, yes. whether it's being used for terrorism or for drug or for organized crime. And then suddenly you notice that someone from Nigeria suddenly dropped... 500 million U.S. dollars. How? The person is not Dangote. It's not a Denuga. It's not a make up for He has no industry, no factory. And you trace and the person is related to a politician. And you kept the money until a journalist found it out that he's saying you are this thing. We sued them all. Then went to court. We now won the case. So then to return, they say, oh, come and tell us the money looted from your country mm -hmm. being with us for close to. Mm -hmm. And you know that the St. James C. Bury was tried by a high court in Asabanda Abuja mm -hmm. out of 102 cases mm -hmm. EFCC mm -hmm. presented mm -hmm. against him. Mm -hmm. He was not guilty. That's where I thank Britain again <laughs> because they arrested him, retried mm -hmm. him, and found him guilty mm -hmm. in all the, you know, Accounts that he was freed from Nigeria. I, 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 talk so much about our judiciary. And, and when when you talk about no prison, I think this is where we actually need to give them credit because yeah, in yeah. the first place they went the extra mile. They found him guilty and prosecuted him, and probably as a result of that successful prosecution, that is how they were able to discover some of these funds. Because if it was funds directly from Nigeria, where we see had the EFCC yeah. case going on and back and forth, they may not have been able to identify some of these funds that we are kept in their care. And you talked about, I mean... Okay, now we have established, um, you know, these facts. My major concern now is how does all of this make us look on the international scene? Nigeria is among the African countries that benefits a lot from AIDS, grants, PT money, like some people have called it. And then we're doing this with recovered fund, where we don't know exactly where it is, who should it go to, who has it. At the moment, we cannot categorically say... Okay, the money is headed here or headed there, or the money is in this particular place. Um, tell me, how does this make you feel? With you know, how how this portrays Nigeria as a nation on the international scene? No, I think first of all, it, it makes us a mockery hmm. before the international scene, and of course, it, there is a breach of trust. Okay, because you need to look at these issues. An agreement was signed. 
this is what we expected was going to happen. And before you know it, the money is transferred. And just and let's let's state it categorically. It's just a tiny chunk. A tiny chunk of that money that was returned to us. Okay. And so there is this drama. Now, where does that trust lie where you are expected to get more sums out of this recovery process? Yeah. So there were, beyond the confusion of it all, it makes us a joke that mm -hmm. I mean if the government has said we have returned this fund. The receiving government says we have mm -hmm. received this fund. Yeah. There was no problem for the transfer of funds. Now, when this money should be used for the right purpose, you are questioned as to what was the process and what is the state of the fund. And someone who should have the records comes out to say the money has been returned, which was not even part of the agreement before, was returned to the debt. Only for those in charge of the state to come out and say they have not received any of those funds. So what happened from the time these monies were transferred from the UK government to the Nigerian government and where exactly is that fund is the big question. Mm -hmm. And we say that within that period of time, some people have hijacked the funds. Yeah. Like the same way it was initially looted, they have dipped their hands and we cannot account for it. Or is there something going on that is still not clear? Are there plans to return the money to the state? Or what exactly is the issue at hand? So I think there is a lot of questions that begs for clarification. And you cannot just sit down from a layman's angle and not understand. Because it will be a joke if these monies were just recently returned to us. And within the space of one week, we're not talking about a month. We're not talking about two months. These monies have found their ways back into private coffers. So it tells us as to how serious are we as a nation? Are we really accounting for looted funds recovered? Or are we thriving, like you said, in that stinking aura of corruption okay. that has bedeviled us over the years. We need to look at it beyond, because you, you talk about a government that says, oh, look, we came with the mantra of fighting corruption. And this is why we are even recovering these funds in the first place. Why, what would it have cost us to actually have gotten these funds and use these funds for the right purpose, purpose that will be felt by Nigerians at large? as against what the individuals who attacked these funds wanted to use them, these funds for in the first place. All right, um, Prince, I'm curious. Would you say that so far all the loots that we have recovered over the years um, have been justifiably used? The ones that we, we found or that we didn't have I, any condition? I don't, I don't think so. Most mm. of the time, the whole thing is clouded in mystery. Just as I was saying, when you say it will be used in healthcare in transport, you are being generic. Mm. Tell us you are going to use to build a standard 250 bedroom hospital okay. in the six geopolitical zones. Okay. What will it cost? What will it cost? All yeah. of us will look at it and mm. monitor okay. the building, the timeline. Then when you say transport sector, even Keko Akada, a part of the transport sector. In fact, cows, donkeys. In this country, are part of our cattle, are part of our transport sector. So be specific, and that's why from the time of Obasanjo till now, a lot of questions and question marks have been asked and put on this uh, uh, return of the loots because we don't see the impact. They just tell us, "Oh, we are going to use it." In fact, in the time of Obasanjo, they even said they are putting it back in the budget. Mm -hmm. But maybe they did. But this thing, people need to see specific projects. Okay. We can pinpoint something like this standard hospital mm -hmm. or Lamajeri schools or nomadic schools or special science schools. We go and monitor and see it being done, not just telling us you are putting it back and somebody will dip hand as you say and take it back. But when you are saying if the loot has disappeared, do you know in this country that there was a time that a 25,000 tonner ship Mm. Carrying crude oil mm. that was through bunkering, they seized the ship. Mm -hmm. If you don't want, if you want to envisage what I'm talking about, the ship length is from here mm. to the central bank, mm. and that ship vanished mm. with the crude oil till today. Mm. Nobody was arrested, mm -hmm. nobody was prosecuted, mm -hmm. nobody talked about it. Oh, no. Died like mm -hmm. that. 
There was a time I was investigating what happened to those school children, about 142 or thereabout, that died in Sosoliso. Few months before that, 4,000 or so KVA generator was stolen from uh, International Airport of Port Harcourt. Do you know what it means for somebody to take away even 1,000 KVA? You need how many forklift uh, trailer to do it? Till today, nothing has happened. So we are in a country that prosecuting of people who are doing this is near impossible. Mm -hmm. Because both the lawyers, the senior advocates are involved, yeah. they go and get what they call perpetual injunction. Mm -hmm. There is an ex-governor mm -hmm. now enjoying perpetual injunction that he will never be arrested by EFCC, mm -hmm. ICPC, police, or anybody till he dies. Mm -hmm. And up to 70 corruption charges are hanging on his head. So what can, that's why people honestly, he said it all, other nations are seeing this country as a joke. That's why when you take out, uh, they, uh, uh, this is not a joke. I wanted to go to Kotonu. <laughs> to Kotonu. A faith-based group invited me for seminar. And, and I say, what is the sense of flight? Mm -hmm. Let me use what to add this in border. The immigration of the Kotonu people took me to their rooms. And they, I said, oh my God, I'm going to Notre Dame. They said, what's Notre Dame? I said, Notre Dame Catholic Church, Kotonu. They said, what are you going there to do? I said, the priest. And the lay people invited me to talk to them. So oh, what are you? I said, I'm a Catholic. So are you a priest? I say no, but in Catholic, they have people that are assigned position that looks like evangelists. They call us evangelizers. You say your church appointed you that they say, yeah. You say, where is the letter of invitation to Kotonu? I show it to them. They say, move deeper. They strip me to my pant and singlet. In Kotonu, that should be a begging in citizens to allow us. Sash all... my shoe. <laughs> Everything. And God, God gives me spirit of patience. I didn't, I was just enduring the, imagine where there are men and women asking you to remove your trousers. They use camera as if they were pressing the trousers, everything. At the end of the day, they handed over everything, even searched the pages of my Bible. I said to the man, is this necessary? Mm -hmm. That the Ecomos protocol even says that I will pass through here yeah. and be there for 90 days without any paper. But this is my passport. He said, it's not all about you. Mm -hmm. Day before yesterday, four pastors post their general oversee. Hmm. We allowed them to go, but on a second part, we search only one. Okay. Quantities of cocaine, mm -hmm. hard drugs, mm -hmm. we are found on them. Mm -hmm. They show me the pictures. Mm -hmm. So this is the issue. So when you are parading yourself, you are holding diplomatic passport, the mm -hmm. red passport, mm -hmm. you are in Nigeria, people know that you are joking. They don't take you seriously. don't take you serious. How many direct foreign investments are we having again? All of them are going to Ghana mm -hmm. and South Africa, giving Twitter and others mm -hmm. because they have more stable way of recovering their money if anything happens. Anything but here, happens, yeah. mm -hmm. like I say, we are stinking mm -hmm. in corruption and in greed. And here is only a place where you can point the house of a politically exposed person and say, this is the shopping mall of the wife of mm -hmm. a governor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the refinery of a minister. Mm -hmm. This is the ship bought by the government official. And the people in civil servants service, this is their estate. Mm -hmm. Jobs that are supposed to give their children are being sold. Mm -hmm. And nobody is talking. Mm -hmm. It is obviously an unpleasant. As more hot issues, um, you know, unveil themselves, we'll bring them to you right here on Hot Topics on the Beach TV. Thank you so much for joining me, Mr. Kule Adini mm -hmm. and Thank Prince you. Timothy of Wibu. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And to you out there, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this video. I'll see you next time on the Hot Topics.